Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar called Business Analysis is Not Just a Job Title, How to Leverage Your Career Experience to Become a Business Analyst. I'm your host, Deb Oliver, and on behalf of IIBA, we thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Webinars are just one way to continue to hone your skill set as a BA practitioner, but there are also other ways that you can do this through reference resources such as the Babbock Guide or the IIBA online library which contains hundreds of titles and videos related to business analysis work. You also have network opportunities through your local chapter and let's not forget the upcoming Building Business Capability Conference in November where you can gain insights from experts in all areas of business analysis. Please have a look at the IIBA website to access full program details. You know, IIBA is all about uniting a community of professionals to create better business outcomes. And when I think about the sheer number of people that are joining us today, we've actually achieved that this very afternoon. It is truly a true testament to our, our mission, our core purpose. Now it is my pleasure to introduce our expert presenter today, Laura Brandenburg. Laura is a well-known author with more than a decade experience within the business analysis field. In addition, Laura is truly a recognized leader in the VA community. And with that, please welcome Laura Brandenburg. Well, thank you so much for having me today. I accidentally shared my webinar, webcam, there we go. <laughs> Uh, it's always a real treat to be part of IIBA in these awesome webinars that you host for the VA community. Uh, so today we're here to talk about business analysis and it not being just a job title and specifically how many of you on the webinar today can leverage your career experience to become a VA. I receive a lot of questions um, like I've been a software developer or a customer service professional or a project manager. How do, I, how do I get started as a business analyst? And so I really wanted to take a deep dive into that topic today. Before we jump into that, yeah. Hello? Well, we can't see your screen. Oh. Sorry about that. That's okay. <laughs> I had accidentally shared the webinar to unmute myself, and I think I... Let's see. How about now? Perfect. All right. Thank you. So before we dive in, just a little bit about Bridging the Gap. Bridging the Gap is specifically is a leading virtual training provider for business analysts, and we specifically are geared to help people who are starting their business analyst career, uh, mid-career professionals who are starting their business analyst careers. So all of our courses are endorsed by IIBA and also the Project Management Institute. To, uh, as part of the credits that you might need as part of your certification plans. Uh, I've also published a book called How to Start a Business Analyst Career, and we have a variety of templates and toolkits available as well. Uh, and we do a ton of free resources too, like webinars like this one. Uh, there's over 500 articles published on Bridging the Gap. Uh, and there's also a free career planning course uh, if you're looking for more information about how to get started inside your BA career. Uh, I always like to start my webinars about getting started as a BA by taking a brief look at the Bridging the Gap roadmap, the career roadmap. Essentially, this is a look at how to go from where you are at today to getting into your business analysis career. And I won't talk through all of this today because there's a 43 minute, the career planning course I mentioned is a 43 minute audio that walks you through this in a lot of detail. Uh, but I do want to emphasize specifically your transferable skills and how they relate to where you're at on the career roadmap because that's the piece of this puzzle that we're talking about more today. So if you are on the left side of the roadmap, meaning that you are not employed or maybe not employed even in an office setting, the way that understanding your transferable skills is really going to help you see more opportunities in the job market. Uh, and also seeing the BA role as not just a job title will help you, will help open up opportunities that you might not think of as BA opportunities that will really help move your career forward. If you are on the right side of the roadmap, which means you are employed in an office setting uh, and you probably don't have the business analyst job title, though you might, uh, 
understanding what we're talking about today is going to help you with this virtual cycle here of doing more business analysis tasks. It's also going to help you understand the internal options and the roles that might be available to you in your organization to do more business analysis, even if those roles all also do not have the business analyst job title. So that's how what we're talking about today fits within this career roadmap. So what are we going to talk about today specifically? Uh, first we're going to talk about what business analysis is and take a look at the different kinds of job roles within business analysis, just to all be grounded about where we're headed uh, in terms of becoming a BA. We're going to take a look at the key business analysis skills because it's very difficult to understand what career experience you might leverage as a business analyst uh, if you don't understand what those important skills are for a new business analyst. And then finally, we're going to take a look at six specific job profiles and what types of transferable skills each person within that job profile might have. Uh, and this is going to be specific to different profiles, but I encourage you to listen in on all of them because often, you know, one skill that I might talk about for a software developer might resonate with you even if you've never thought about doing software development. So that can really help open up some specific ideas of what skills are transferable based on the career experience that you bring to the profession. Uh, and then afterward, I just wanted to note, um, we will have time at the end for Q&A, um, but whenever we host a webinar like this, we always receive more questions that can be answered during the time that we have. So I'm going to be making myself available on social media after the webinar. Uh, you can post your questions on Twitter using, using that hashtag BTGBA, uh, and I will be following that hashtag and replying to anything there. Uh, I'll also be inside the Bridging the Gap LinkedIn group, and there should be a link there and also possibly in the, the chat box. Uh, and then later today or tomorrow, we're going to be starting a thread on the IIBA LinkedIn group as well and continuing the conversation there. So I really look forward to connecting with you and helping you work through what we work through today and answering your questions in the webinar as well as follow up, following up via social media. Okay, so let's jump into what, what is business analysis, uh, and because before we can understand career paths and how you might leverage your career experience into a BA role, we really need to understand what business analysis is. Uh, this definition is straight from the business analysis body of knowledge, the version 3, and it's our touchstone for business analysis. Okay, so I'm just going to read through this. Business analysis is the practice of enabling change in an enterprise by defining needs and recommending solutions that deliver value to stakeholders. Okay, so business analysis is an extremely broad profession, and this definition encompasses all kinds of activities, all kinds of different projects, but really that key phrase there is enabling change. So how are you creating change in your organization? Sometimes that's by changing the software, sometimes that's by changing the process, sometimes that's by doing big strategic work and creating change that way. So there's a lot of different kinds of change work that, that is encompassed in this definition. Uh, and so almost anywhere in an organization where you find change happening, which is just about all of our organizations, right, there is some business analysis, even if you may not see somebody with that business analyst job title working on the change. There's somebody in that change that's doing business analysis. Uh, and that's really that core point again, that's the title of this webinar, is that not all business analysis is done by those who have the title of business analyst. And on that career roadmap, that's why it's so important to look around your organization and see who's working in, those change, in this change environment and who's making sure people understand the change and recommending solutions for the change and, and doing the elicitation around the needs around that change and, and collaborating with stakeholders. That's where you'll find the seeds of opportunity to do more business analysis in your organization as well. But inside of that, what does a business analyst really do? Uh, this is a look at business analysis from more of a project perspective. Not all BAs work specifically on projects, and, and business analysis definitely isn't confined to project work, but that's still where we find kind of the, the easiest to grab onto BA opportunities is, is within some sort of project context. Um, so at the beginning of a project, the BA is going to be eliciting information. You'll hear people talk about, oh, I feel like I was drinking from a fire hose of, of stakeholders, right? Stakeholders telling me things about what they want and need and, and, and want the system to do or want 
the change to be or the problems that they have today. And that is called elicitation or discovery, and that's where we really start by just asking questions, understanding why, and really getting clarity on the problem to be solved. That's our first task as a VA. What problem are we solving by this project or this initiative? What, what problem will this change solve? Uh, and as we get alignment on that through our multiple stakeholder groups, we start to nail down the scope of what the solution looks like. Uh, and at that point, solution does not have to be a technology solution. It could also be a process change or, or some sort of an organizational update. Um, but often, a lot of changes that we, we, we see BAs working on do often do include some aspect of a software solution as well. Um, but we put some scope around that. What are the key features that are going to be part of the solution? What are the key processes that are going to be updated? Uh, and that's, that's our touchstone for the project, to know what are we tracking to, what is the end result of this specific initiative. And from there, we dive more deeply into the requirements. So this is where we might get to what does you know, this specific piece on a specific screen look like, or a field that we're adding to a database and to a user interface, or the way that a specific workflow needs to change and the, the, step, the, the, the different steps that a business user might need to take to make sure that the workflow is implemented successfully. Uh, and again, that's just like another level of detail to fill in the gaps between, between understanding the scope and really making sure that the change comes to fruition. Uh, and that's where we think of the requirements work that a BA does. There's a lot of analysis and documentation and, and modeling that goes into that work. Uh, and all throughout this, we're communicating about the requirements. So we're gathering, again, continuing to elicit information from stakeholders about what they want and need and how that solution is going to fit with them. And we're also communicating out to people who might be responsible for implementing the solution, um, which includes our technical developers and, and testers and, and technical writers and corporate trainers and any other stakeholders that are in part, part of implementing that solution for our organizations. So that's the high level view of like what a business analyst is and, and what they do. What we see in the job market today though is that there's a ton of different types of job roles and so it's not like there's one role that makes up business analysis and this can be really confusing when you're first starting because you're like, well, it, this seems like it's a business analyst job but maybe it doesn't have the title and, and I'm doing all these other things too or it's very specific in a certain way. Uh, these three categories of job roles are not something I made up they are straight from IIBA's competency model. And if you don't have a copy of that, I'd highly suggest downloading it. It's one of the member resources that you receive as, as part of becoming a member of IIBA. Uh, and they help us look at the job market, which can seem so chaotic and fragmented, and make, make sense of it. So the first category are what's considered hybrid job roles. And this is when you're doing business analysis and you're doing something else. So that something else might be quality assurance. Uh, that's a very common combination where I both write the requirements and then test the solution against those requirements. Another very common combination is the project manager and the business analyst. Uh, often those, those people are project managers. They don't even think of themselves as business analysts yet, uh, but they're really doing both of those roles in their work. Uh, and so you might see that under a project management role, but, under, but kind of see a lot of the, the core BA responsibilities that we talked about. Uh, another very common combination is somebody who's a software developer or technical lead and a business analyst. So there's some sort of IT responsibilities along with BA. And you can really continue to um, extend this into multiple different types of job roles and kind of put these combinations together. Uh, there's also situations where you see people wearing three or four of these hats. Uh, and that's a lot of responsibility to hold on to, but it's not uncommon in the job market today, especially in smaller and less formal organizations. And you would still be considered to be part of the BA profession, uh, even though the BA work is, maybe, is only part of your role. So that's hybrid. Uh, next, let's talk about specialists. And this, these are roles that do business analysis and probably focus more on business analysis, but have some sort of a special way of doing it. Uh, and so that specialty could be a methodology, it could be a domain, it could be a specific tool. So methodology, agile is really common way um, and, and best practice way, it's becoming a, a very big best practice in the software development arena of how we go about managing software development 
the software development life cycle. And there's a specific way that we handle requirements and handle our collaboration aspects of the requirements if we're a BA in the Agile environment. And so experience in Agile can be really relevant to an Agile BA role. Same thing with Six Sigma. Again, Six Sigma is not to do with software specifically, but more of a way of, of improving your processes. And there's a specific methodology around how to improve and continue to iterate and evolve your processes within Six Sigma. So you might see BAs who are specialists and have their Six Sigma black belt. Uh, you may see roles that are looking for BAs that have that kind of experience. Uh, domain, this is where we talk about more of the business side. So if you see roles that are specific uh, business industries, retail, finance, mortgage industry, uh, banking, those are all very common specialties where the organizations in those industries tend to prefer to hire BAs that have some industry experience uh, and kind of know the lingo of that domain. Uh, tools is more of a technology focus. So it could be your accounting system, it could be your enterprise resource management system, a tool like SAP or Salesforce.com. And by knowing how that tool works, and if an organization has already decided to leverage that tool or migrate to that tool, you can help become, be very specific in how you elicit the requirements and, and are able to leverage the capabilities of that tool. And so it's another special, specialization we see. And that really, that list goes on and on and on. We could talk about a lot of those uh, different specialties, uh, but you'll see that pop up when you see job descriptions that have these requirements that seem like they're coming out of, of left field from what you've understood about business analysis, and that's usually because they're some sort of a specialist role. Uh, and the final category is what we all think of as business analysis, that generalist BA who can work on any kind of project, any kind of methodology, step in and use their core BA skills to be successful. And we do see some of these roles where an organization will value these generalist skills more, more heavily than, say, the hybrid skills or the specialist skills, but they are still the rarity um, in, our, in our job market today. I feel like I've been talking through these for, I don't know, the last five years now as I've done webinars for IIBA and elsewhere, and we always we ho keep hoping that you know, this is going to become a, bi a bigger set of the BA role, um, but we're just seeing so much diversity in the profession that I think the generalist roles um, in some local areas are taking more prominence, but as business analysis gains more awareness uh, worldwide and becomes a more exciting and, and more people are gravitating to the profession, we're still seeing a lot of the hybrid and specialist roles pop up as well. So I just quickly, I'm not going to talk through this slide, it might be a little difficult to read, uh, but I, this is again straight from the IIBA website, there's a link down at the bottom that you can go to to review this list. And I just want to use bring this up because all of these are different job titles that fit within those three categories that we just talked about and are job titles that would be considered within the business analysis profession. So there must be like 20 or 30 job titles here and I'm sure that there's more, we could all come up with ones that aren't on this list yet. And so another way to just be thinking about how diverse the profession is, how broad reaching it is, and how if you have one of those tit these titles today, it's very likely that you are also going to be bringing experience into the profession or might already really be in the profession and part of the profession. And so for you, it's more of acknowledging that, yes, I am a business analyst, even though my title is process owner or product manager or information architect, for example, uh, saying, yes, I'm a business analyst and I'm going to choose to adopt some of the, the practices of the profession and use this as part of my professional development plan. Okay. So with that, let's talk about the core skills to, that are critical uh, for a business analyst. And this is a general breakdown of the skills that I see to be most important for people who are new to the profession. So what are those skills that you need to get into the profession and to successfully um, kind of start your career, right? Uh, so core skills, uh, these are skills that you can develop in just about any, in any kind of job role, right? So, and they're critical, critical to the success of a business analyst. Uh, so the ability to communicate well in written form and in verbal form, uh, the ability to solve problems and think critically about problems, 
really critical thinking skills or, you know, it's, you can imagine multiple scenarios where you may have developed those. Uh, definitely very in, important in your business analysis career as well. And then facilitation skills, so the ability to facilitate meetings and discussions. For a VA, particularly, uh, that tends to be small working meetings of project stakeholders where we're collaborating about the requirements. Uh, on a more senior level, you might get to a larger requirements workshop, but to get into the role, typically, that ability to submit or to facilitate a meeting of say three to five people uh, about a requirements related deliverable or requirements related task is, is really the, the kind of the entry level role when it comes to facilitation. Uh, next on the list are business analysis skills specifically and these are specific to what we do as business analysts. So documentation and specification, uh, this is how we document the requirements and this is going to be different the actual documentation will be different based on the type of organization or the methodology in place in your organization. For example, one organization might have a BA that creates a business requirements document or BRD, if you've ever seen that in a job posting. Uh, that's you know, typically a more waterfall type organization that does a big document uh, big document with all the requirements up front and then hands that over to the software development team for implementation. In your more agile organizations, you'll see requirements like use cases, user stories, product backlogs. Again, it falls into the category of documentation. It's just a different way to document the requirements and to specify those requirements for your team. Uh, Let's see, the ability to analyze those requirements. So documentation is the output, but analysis is the process we go through to figure out what those requirements are, uh, along with the elicitation and communication and the, the questions, but the analysis is the piece that, you know, our critical thinking piece of how we actually figure out those requirements. And hand in hand with that is usually some sort of visual modeling. So writing the text of the requirements is very important, but coming up with visual models that put that text in context is also extremely important and that often helps us facilitate the, the analysis process by choosing a good visual model that represents uh, the requirements and, and helps our stakeholders think through those requirements. Uh, and then finally, there are specific tools that business analysts use to manage requirements, uh, and those don't tend to be super important from an entry level uh, perspective. Um, obviously, Word, tools like Word and Excel and PowerPoint, um, being able to use basic office tools, uh, there's more advanced tools to manage the requirements. Those don't tend to be needed when you're new. They tend to be needed for roles that are specific to implementing those tools within a business analysis team and managing the VA process within that team. Again, not kind of a new, important for a new business analyst. The next category is soft skills. So these, again, develop in all kinds of roles, relationship building, earning trust with your stakeholders, uh, being able to kind of reach out and build relationships with people and not just rely on um, rely on them to step in, but really be proactive and, and be their partner uh, in the project. Uh, being able to manage your own work is really important. As a BA, we don't tend to have somebody managing us day to day uh, or hour to hour. We have to take a task and figure out how to create success on that task and implement that and finish it and see it through to the end. Uh, having a thick skin, we get a lot of feedback as VAs and not all of it is, it. By, but by design, it ha almost has to be critical feedback. We might put a draft of a visual model out there, and our best outcome is that our stakeholders tear it apart for us and help us rebuild it so it better represents their needs. And if you're thinking that you have to get that model perfect the first time, uh, it can feel like that takes a bit of a thick skin to get that feedback. And then finally, um, being able to handle ambiguity. So at the beginning of a project, there's a lot of uncertainty, there's a lot of ambiguity, and business analysis is really all about taking ambiguity and make, bringing more and more clarity to what the desired outcome is, to what the requirements are. So you don't want to live in ambiguity forever, but you have to be able to handle some ambiguity at the beginning of the project and then gradually lead your, your team and facilitate your team to getting more and more clarity around the requirements. Uh, and then finally, on the, the far right here, uh, we have our specialist skills, and these are the types of skills you see pop up for those specialist roles. And they might be technical, domain, methodology specific. We kind of went through some of those uh, when we talked about the specialist job role. Okay, so we've talked about 
what the business analysis, what business analysis is, what types of job roles there are within business analysis, uh, and what kinds of skills you need to be successful as a new business analyst. So that's kind of our grounding, right? So if you're sitting here and you're saying, today I'm a software developer, how do I become a VA? Or today I'm a software tester or a subject matter expert, how do I become a VA, right? You, you've got to figure out kind of where you want to go within that profession, and then you can craft a plan to get there. What I wanted to share now, because I receive a ton of questions around how specifically do I leverage my career experience, uh, and what, what are the next steps I should be taking given my career profile. So just talk about some of the more general and commonly common pr career profiles I hear about and how uh, what the, the transferable skills that you might have are, and what opportunities you have to grow your experience and to continue to expand your experience and move closer to more of a BA role. So that's what we're going to talk about next. We're going to talk about six different roles, software developer, customer service representative, software tester, project manager, technical writer, and subject matter expert. Uh, and then I have that, you know, insert your career background here. Uh, I just picked these six. We can definitely talk about your specific career background in the Q&A. Uh, and, and also, I would still encourage you to listen in, because most likely I will touch on something that is going to resonate with you in one of these other profiles. And so you know, listen in to all of them and, and kind of pay attention to what resonates with you, no matter what your career background is. So first, let's talk about software developer. So a software developer is the person who's responsible for building or developing the software. Uh, often that involves coding, technical design, uh, lots of different technical skills. Uh, and, and so you've kind of you've got that technical background as a software developer that really suits you well to be working as a BA on a more IT focused project. Uh, and those are some of the transferable skills that you have, right? You've worked on projects, you see how projects go from beginning to end, and that general exposure of how projects work, specifically software projects, can be really beneficial. Um, as well as can understanding the possibilities of technology, right? You know what technology can do because you've built the technology that can do those things. And, and so you can help stakeholders envision solutions that they may not even be thinking about because you do understand what technology can do for them. Uh, you tend to be highly analytical, and so this helps with the requirements process. You've probably received requirements that were incomplete or had gaps, and you figured that out and either filled in those gaps with your own idea of requirements or ask questions to fill in those gaps, and that's, that's that analytical piece. You've got that analytical piece down of how do I take uh, a requirement and build it out into a solution. Uh, you might have specific knowledge of specific products as well, um, like a specific tool that's used in the business community and how to administer and enhance and migrate an organization to that tool. And you may have even done some specification work, uh, depending on the methodology in place in your organization. And it may even be very close to requirements if you start to look at it and match up what you've done with requirements. That really depends on how close your software development role and how much of a hybrid role you are in when it comes to that software development BA hybrid that we talked about. So what opportunities do you have as a software developer? One of the most important things is to make sure that you're interacting directly with your business stakeholders. So, uh, so often, right, you might be interacting directly with other professionals on the team or uh, with the BA or the PM, and how can you get yourself a seat at the table so that you're first maybe hearing what the business stakeholders want and then having those conversations with them. Uh, and you don't want to work around your process to do this, but often there's opportunities to get into those interactions in some way. Uh, and then as you're doing this, the other opportunity is to really practice using the business terminology and to practice losing that technical jargon. So developers can get really caught into solution mode and, oh, do you want an HTML pop-up box like this, or do you want you know, this to be in Java or .NET or whatever, you know, those kinds of things. Business users don't typically care about 
the how of the solution or the technology behind the solution. They are going to talk about what they want a system to do, maybe, or what problem they want to have solved, how they want things to work, or what's wrong with the system today. And so really practicing using that business language is so important, uh, especially when you come from that technical background. It doesn't mean you have to forget that technical jargon. It just doesn't become your primary mode of communication, especially when you're talking to business stakeholders. Okay, so let's, I wanted to start with an IT role and then bounce right to more of a business focused role because what I see, I see a lot of people think, oh, you have to be technical to become a business analyst or if you're technical, they think you have to be a business person to become a business analyst because you see both of these sets of requirements in the job role. Uh, and what I've seen in my work helping people get started as BAs, it's about 50-50, technical background, business background. So let's move to a business background now and, and we'll start with the customer service representative. So a customer service representative, uh, this, there could be a lot of titles around this too, but just think of somebody who is on the phone interacting with customers either around a sales process, so it could be almost a sales representative too, or fulfilling that sale and resolving issues related to that the, that the customer has using the sale, uh, or sorry, using the product or the service that they purchased. So in that role, you tend to be excellent communicators, right? You cannot be on the phone with customers unless you are a great communicator, and that's verbal communication, and if you're also doing chat or email support, that could be e written communication as well. And most likely, if you're really good at that role, you're also good at relationship building and building relationships really quickly because you have just, you know, you've got a frustrated person on the phone or that you're ha helping handle with something and you're going to be building a relationship with them and earning their trust really quickly. Uh, you probably know how to solve problems and kind of see workarounds and analyze and figure out how to get from where the customer is to the solution that they want. And you might even have deep domain knowledge within the industry that you're in and that can be very valuable if you look at some of those specialist roles within a domain. What are some of the opportunities for you to grow uh, within business analysis? Look at where you could champion a project to solve a customer issue. So often, as a, as a, in, if you're in this role, you're probably thinking a lot of your problem solving is probably workarounds and what can you do with what you have in place today to solve the problem today and an urgent need. What could you, how could you think more long term about how could we do something different or change something a big picture in our organization so that we do, don't have these customer issues anymore. Uh, so kind of get around, get past the workarounds and into those bigger picture problem solving tasks. Uh, you could also just rip, um, volunteer to represent the customer as a pro on a project as a subject matter expert. We're going to talk more specifically about the subject matter expert role later, uh, but basically you become the customer's voice. Uh, and in a lot of the work I did on, on products as a BA, we always had somebody from our customer service team who assisted the product manager and, and worked with the product manager uh, and represented the customer's voice on the project. Look for ways to practice those specifications. So email communication is great, but now let's get more specific about what that solution looks like. Practice writing requirements. Uh, and meeting notes is also a good way to get practice with that more written communication. Uh, so you could volunteer if you're facilitate or if you're in a meeting to take those notes. It helps you be a more active listener, uh, helps you, gives you license to ask follow-up questions and make sure that everybody's really uh, speaking clearly and, and talking to each other clearly uh, and gets you some exposure when you start sharing those meeting notes for the team. Next, let's talk about software tester. So software tester and business analysis are like two sides of the same coin, right? So a BA analyzes and documents the requirements. The tester confirms that the solution meets those requirements requirements. And often software testing happens in the context of, well, of a software project, right? You're testing the software of the solution. Uh, so as a tester, you probably have experience reviewing specifications and knowing exactly what it takes to make a good specification. I know when I was a BA, uh, I was always, um, my QA engineers always 
poked a lot of holes in my specifications. And when I was a software tester, I was always the one asking those nitty gritty questions of like, well, how is this little scenario in this case going to be handled? And that helped the VAs make sure that they were covering all those issues in the requirements or all those scenarios in the requirements. Uh, so you know what makes a good requirement specification. You know some of those questions to ask. Uh, you know how to think through and analyze that and, and figure that out. Again, like a software developer, you've got exposure to projects and you've seen how they flow uh, in your organization. You've probably got strong written communication by creating test plans, writing defect reports. Uh, and another way to think about your defect reports is a lot of times uh, defects that come from the business community, uh, sometimes they can be new requirements, right? So you might have actually, in the process of writing defects, have specified some requirements and that can be a really good piece, a transferable skill when it comes to writing specifications or documenting requirements. Uh, and that critical thinking that it takes to completely test a solution also uh, tends to be a very strong skill set for a software tester. But where do you need to grow? Uh, often it's more about interacting directly with those business stakeholders and trying to get ahead of the process, right? So you're, as a software tester, usually on the receiving end, kind of at the end of the project. Where are there opportunities for you to sit in on requirements meetings or interact with business subject matter experts, maybe getting involved more in user acceptance testing, so you're facilitating testing with those business stakeholders, getting a, a feel for not just how the software works, but also the process, uh, the business process. So really like looking for any opportunity to interact with business subject matter experts. Uh, tackle solutions to handle those big defects. So if a big kind of juicy issue comes up at the end of the project and the BA is, you know, often BAs are assigned to the next project and it's hard for them to, you know, come back to this project and, and tackle that. Maybe that's an opportunity for you to step up and, and take a BA mindset to that bigger solution uh, to help the team work through it. Uh, in a timely manner. Uh, and also like software developers practice losing um, that tech jargon as well. It's very, you can be such a partner with a software developer as a software tester um, that you can start thinking in more black or white box kind of techie terms um, and making sure that you're lifting yourself up and thinking in those business terms, business process, how is a user going to use this piece of software and kind of keeping, keeping that um, mode of communication intact. Okay, next let's talk about project manager. So this is, you know, this is so interesting because I mentioned how there's so many hybrid roles out there where the project manager is the business analyst, whether or not they realize that. But in its purest form um, and by, you know, formal definition, a BA works on defining the problem and the solution. That's the enabling change, the understanding needs, uh, the, the possible solutions part that we talked about in that core definition. Uh, and a PM oversees the solution delivery. So that can be budget, timeline, how are we going to solve this problem and what does the solution look like and who is all involved in creating the solution. Uh, so that's the, the, the technical split between a, PA, a BA and a PM. Um, as a PM, you're very likely to have very strong communication skills, just like a BA. You've probably dealt with higher level stakeholders and stakeholders all throughout the organization, facilitated a lot of meetings, uh, created documentation that might be very similar to scope documentation, uh, business needs, scope, um, high level documentation, uh, where we see a lot of BAs uh, maybe needing to take, or sorry, PMs needing to, to build up their skills a little bit is in the detailed analysis of the requirements. So a lot of the projects I've seen run by a hybrid BA PM, uh, that detailed of what should the system do can sometimes be assigned to the business stakeholders um, who are subject matter experts as a, as a to-do in, in an environment where there's not a BA assigned. Uh, so that might be another opportunity for you to take over some more BA tasks as a PM. And also spending some time discovering the business problem and the value. So as a project manager, you can get really focused on what can we do within this budget what can we do within this timeline? How is it going to work? What's the scope in terms of timeline and budget and, and features, but not so much in terms of what's the core business problem and the value and how can we, um, 
how could we understand that problem? So just spending some time not thinking about how we're going to manage the project, but what the problem is and why the project exists in the first place. All right, and we're on to our last profile, which is good. We should have lots and lots of time for questions here. Um, oh, no, actually we have two profiles, sorry, but we still should have lots of time for questions. So I've mentioned subject matter expert a few times uh, in terms of that being a role that you can play in your transition to business analysis. Uh, and a subject matter expert is really uh, anyone who sits on a project and represents an area of the business, and they really are a business stakeholder on a project. And as an SME, you could have any number of job titles. You could be an accounting representative, a human resources manager, corporate trainer, marketing analyst, um, you know, the sky is the limit. Any role that has, or any business stakeholder role really can serve as a subject matter expert on a project. And one of the core transferable skills that you have is that knowledge of the business domain, which can be so important uh, when the, the domain, you know, for those specialist roles. So that could be your business domain. It could also be a, a functional domain. So like a human resources representative would understand the human, how human resources runs and how the kinds of functions and processes that are typical in a human resources department, uh, which could be transferable to many different industries, but is specific. Uh, and you might find roles where the BA is focused on helping the human resources department and you would be a, best, a good fit for that, those kinds of roles. And then depending on how far you've taken your work as a subject matter expert into business analysis, you could also have analytical skills, communication, facilitation, specifications, like all different kinds of um, roles there. And it's really, you're going to have to do a little digging to figure out what map, what specifically maps based on the experience that you've had and the kind of work that you've done. Um, what other opportunities do you have? Uh, look at the projects that you're involved with today and see how you could become more of a contributor. So often a subject matter expert is called into discussions and asked questions. Is there a way for you to do some more writing or uh, do some elicitation yourself within your team? Uh, is there a project that you could champion? Uh, so instead of waiting for a project to start and being assigned as the SME, is there a project that you could champion from the beginning and, and work some of that on some of that needs analysis and, and scope documentation that happens at the beginning? Uh, and sim similarly for the more detailed analysis. So if you're thinking about um, you know, what you want a system to do. Could you create a list of requirements or mock up a, a user interface screen of what you'd like or map out a process flow? Those would be different visual models. So practice using some of those BA techniques uh, to communicate what you would like out of a, of a process or of a, of a project and to share your expertise uh, in more analytical ways. And then now we are finally at the last one, and that's the technical writer. So, and this tends to be a really common path into business analysis, and we see, we see a lot of technical writers growing into BA roles. And a technical writer is essentially someone who does the functional or some sort of specification. Typically, that specification gets created at the end of the project to reflect what was actually built or changed. So a technical writer might create the um, the user manual for a product, or they might create the help documentation for a product, or they might create like the process documentation for the internal users to use for that product, right? So that, but they're typically at the end, kind of once the, the all the discovery process has happened, really creating clear documentation that articulates what, how the change has been implemented or what should happen once the change is implemented. Uh, so transferable skills, very strong written communication skills. Unlike a lot of the other roles, uh, technical writers are very, tend to be very comfortable with things like requirements, specifications, and a variety of different visual models that represent the current state of the, of the of the system and process. Uh, very analytical because you've probably discovered what that current state is to put it into the documentation. Uh, and sometimes I've even seen technical writing roles where you really are doing the, the detailed requirements in partnership with somebody who's more on the other side of the business analysis coin. Um, so sometimes you're, you've really got that visual modding, modeling and requirements experience. So some opportunities to grow even more into a BA role. Um, be more proactive about some requirements discovery, and you could start by 
defining requirements for the technical specs for your projects, right? So use that as an opportunity to, to kind of scope a mini project inside of a project. Uh, more requir requirements for the technical specifications, perhaps champion a project that you see, um, you know, an issue maybe like there's, we don't have a great way of doing our help documentation, we could really use a new tool that would integrate with our systems to, to do the help documentation and, and champion a project like that and take the role of a, of a stakeholder subject matter expert uh, and see that through to be, from beginning to end. Uh, and also be working, thinking about what meetings could you help facilitate uh, and becoming more collaborative in your process. So. Uh, could you facilitate a review of the technical specs or the help files, maybe with internal stakeholders in your organization, or, or maybe you do like a, um, like a usability study with uh, actual customers of that documentation uh, and get their input and feedback on it so that you can use that to improve your documentation skills. Whatever you can do to get more interactive and facilitative about the work that you're doing, even within technical writing, or it could be without as well. Because eventually you want to get ahead of the process, right? You want to go from being the recipient of what the solution is and documenting it to discovering what that solution is and, and creating requirements to specify what that solution will be. Okay, so we've covered a lot of career paths. And, you know, I know that if you're listening in today and you're like, oh, this business analysis thing, it sounds like the path that I want to be on, that you have some sort of transferable skills because you wouldn't be able to say that unless you knew that you had, unless you had some experience to, to draw from, something that resonates. So you're starting from somewhere and you have some of those skills and kind of go back to that checklist of skills that I gave you at the beginning. Think about, download the IABA competency model. It's another more detailed checklist to use uh, and, and be thinking about, I, I really think, you know, everybody on this call today who really wants to be a VA has some sort of transferable skills to draw from. Um, and this is not, again, an exhaustive list. I, in fact, I have an article on Bridging the Gap that has 13 jobs <laughs> that can lead to a VA job. And if you're interested in that, feel free to email me. I'll have my email address up at the end or reach out to me on social media and I'll share it. Um, but even that 13 is not comprehensive. It's just an expansion and an extension of what we talked about here today. But I do, we talked about a lot of information. So again, we talked about the BA role, the different types of roles that there are within business analysis, the key skills, and some patterns for you to help come up with your transferable skills. So what, what's your takeaway from today? What would I encourage you to do as a next step? Um, because it's really up to you to take an honest assessment of where you're at against your business analysis career goals and start assessing those competencies you have, right? So where are the places that you have transferable skills um, and where are the what are the gaps? Where are the areas where you need to practice and really fill in those gaps with learning? Um, and then you're really empowered to select a book or a training program or some sort of tool that's going to help you learn what's, what a BA does to fill in that gap. And most importantly, and I have it underlined here, is applying what you learned. So if you go back to that career roadmap that we had and, and you look at that virtuous cycle I talked about, where you apply what you learned, that kicks off that cycle of, of one BA opportunity leading to another BA opportunity. So when you're learning something new, say a new visual model or a new way of documenting requirements, and you're applying that at work, and sharing that with people, you'll start to create more opportunities for yourself. Uh, and, and that can tend to spiral and lead you more quickly into a business analysis pos position. Um, and so all of our training programs at, at Bridging the Gap really provide time for that application because I, I really feel it's so important. And then you have a connection with an instructor while you do that so that you can ask questions and get feedback on your work and, and not be kind of in a vacuum of like, I learned all of this, but now how do I apply it? And so be looking for ways to bring in that kind of iterative feedback and application and into your professional development plan. And just to reiterate, like my final reminder, because I think it's so important, like business analysis is not 
just a job title, right? It's a way of doing work within organizations. It's, it's enabling change. You're going to find business analysis all across your organization when you start to look for it. It actually becomes really difficult not to see people as business analysts and very common in being like going up to people, like, do you know you're, you're really a business analyst <laughs> and you're doing a lot of business analysis type of work. Uh, and that's, that's the, the switch if you leave with one thing today that I'd like to encourage you to do is to start just seeing business analysis everywhere and not just in a job title or in a specific role within your organization. All right, with that, uh, I have some links here to connect with me and I know we probably have a, a lot of questions and I'd love to get through as, as many as we can, Deborah. That sounds great. Thank you very much, Laura. And just to reiterate what Laura said at the very beginning, uh, Laura has kindly offered to make herself available after this webinar. And if you go into the chat box, you'll see that I've provided the uh, naming convention for Bridging the Gap, the LinkedIn group, that, um, that you can post some questions, as well as the, the Twitter um, account, so that you can post those questions directly to Laura. But we do have some questions here um, within our own question box. Uh, and I, I, I'd like to ask, ask you, if you may, uh, Laura, can you go back to the technical writer profile? Sure. We, have a, we actually have a number of questions on that one. Interesting. Right. Yeah. <laughs> there we are. <laughs> Okay, there is one thing that is mentioned in terms of opportunities, champion a project. Can you talk a little bit about what's expected there? Sure. So a champion, uh, you can look at that at, at a lot of different levels. So often the champion of a, of a project ends up being a sponsor. We think of that as the sponsor, right? So the person who might be at a higher level in the organization, um, that has budget authority that can kick off projects and be the sponsor. Uh, but as a champion, you don't have to be at that level to, to champion or kickstart a pro project. You're probably going to need to find a sponsor, right? But a champion is going to be somebody who understands that problem that's going to be solved, has a vision for a better solution that's a long-term solution, not just the workaround that we're going to do today to get through this, but here's how if we solve this problem in a long-term proactive way, it would realize a huge benefit and solve a big need in our organization. So you're essentially creating that first creating a vision for the first part of the project that, that problem solving and the needs analysis that a BA does at the beginning. Uh, and then you're looking at, in your organization, how do new projects get started, right? So is there a way for you to do this informally and, and create a little project team and, and get something done kind of outside of the normal scheme of how work flows in your organization? I've definitely done that and kind of been the champion of rogue projects that just kind of fly under the radar. Um, or is it something that you need to reach out, get resources for, flow through your normal development process or your normal project process. So there, that's where it takes awareness of how things get done in your organization to really be a champion through it. And then as a, you know, if you're following a, a project process, then you become a, a, a SME or an SME essentially on that project, um, or perhaps even fulfill other roles on that project as well, depending on who gets assigned to the project and what gaps you need to fill. Great question. Great. Yeah. yeah, and great answer. Thank you. So we talk about people that already have a role and then they're transitioning into a business analysis practitioner role. Mm -hmm. Can we look at a, a fresh graduate? So what are the things should uh, a newly graduate, uh, graduate, what kinds of things should they be thinking about in terms of how to set themselves up for success in starting a business analysis career? Right. I think as a fresh graduate, you really want to be looking at what opportunities do you have while you're in school to get employed in an office setting uh, through internships, perhaps volunteering, perhaps part-time work you do in the summer or part-time work you do while you're employed or while you're in school, pardon me. Um, so that you're getting that exposure to the office setting. Uh, so when you leave school, you have already have some experience that you can draw from uh, in terms of leveraging that right into a business analysis role. Uh, and the other, the other path for fresh college graduates is to look around 
in your local area or the local area you desire to be in and see what organizations are specifically hiring entry-level business analysts. It tends not to be the majority of organizations, but there tend to be some you know, a couple in every local area uh, and targeting those roles specifically uh, in your job search uh, because they're going to be the ones who are open to hiring uh, people who, who haven't been exposed to the office setting type work yet and the kinds of things we were talking about in the webinar today. Great. So we talked a little bit about um, the IT experience and the technical experience that can be applied to a, more of a, a technical BA, but what about more of those soft skills? Can we talk about um, things like facilitation? Do you have any suggestions for a person who has more of a technical background, who wants to get into more of a business analysis role, how they can actually uh, develop those facilitation skills? Yeah, I think in that case, practice makes perfect, right? So looking, starting one-on-one, uh, -on -one, uh, so how do you have conversations today, whether it's with your BA or your PM, uh, and thinking of those in a meeting context. So do some learning about what it takes to plan and run a, an effective meeting, and then apply that to any sort of conversation you have. It could be your manager, it could be somebody else on your project team, and just start practicing those tools, uh, and then opening yourself up to being invited to meetings uh, and offering to take notes of those meetings is a good first step uh, and then eventually facilitating those smaller working meetings that we were talking about. You could also do that in the context of your own team, right? So it doesn't have to be a business focused meeting to start with. You could facilitate a meeting with the other software developers on your team to talk about how you're going to improve a process within your software development organization or how you're going to implement a new tool or what kind of coding standards you're going to use. So look really broadly just for that opportunity to lead and facilitate uh, and not confine it to being like the perfect BA experience to get started. Great. I have this question and I really like this question. So if you're looking at transitioning from uh, a, another role, a uh, professional role, into a BA practitioner role, where do you recommend a person aim? Should they be looking at entry level uh, mm -hmm. business analysis roles, or should they be looking at something a bit higher, especially if they may be um, mid-career in their previous uh, role? Oh, that's a great, great question. I know, and I like that. Most, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, most often what we see mid-career mid professionals transitioning into is not the entry-level roles, because those are designed for recent college graduates. They have salary levels that recent college graduates want uh, and, or are open to and are not typically, you know, if you have five to ten years of career experience, it's not going to be a great fit for you. Uh, and so most often we see people migrating into roles that are like Mid mid level roles three that three to five years of experience as a BA. Uh, I have seen people who have migrated or transitioned tr directly into senior business analyst roles because they've realized how much they've done of this in their career background and are really able to position themselves as a senior business analyst. Uh, other times that happens is if you have a really strong area of expertise uh, and you find a perfectly Fit, like a perfect fit specialist role, a lot of times that expertise is really valued uh, and can help you move right into a senior level role as well. Uh, so definitely do not confine yourself to those entry level positions. There's a there, yeah, there's a, only so few of those opportunities, and I think there's a one of our archive webinars about the debunking the top myths. We talked specifically about that in a lot more detail. Excellent. I just want to remind everyone that you will be available um, for questions at um, your LinkedIn group as well yes. as, as Twitter uh, because uh, there are a number of people that have uh, very specific questions that they want to ask of you. So that's a great opportunity for them to follow up. But I think that we have time for one more question. So we talked about the different roles. Can we talk a little bit about industries? What are the kinds of industries do you think would be amenable to using transferable skills for a business um, analyst role or a business analysis professional role? Yeah, that's a that's a great question because I I always think of the industries where we see the specialists so often, 
Um, and is that the question, Deborah? So what industries can I leverage my specialization? Or if I don't have a specialization, what industries are open to me? So really, yeah. it's you know, I, I want to use my transferable skills. So when I look at the different industries, you know, what are the, those industries that would really be open to um, looking at a person with transferable skills? So whether it be banking, whether it be um, insurance, something like that, just to give people a sense of um, some of the areas that they can look at. Yeah, and it's almost like you're looking for a gap there. So what happens when I'm looking at job postings is you'll see a line item for a specific industry in those skills, you know, in that posting, and then there's this like other category where you you don't, and it's always just been a vacuum to me, so I don't have this like list top of mind that I could recommend, but kind of avoiding things like finance and mortgage and real estate and banking, because those tend to want specialists, again, you know, there's always exceptions to every rule, and looking for the jobs that don't have those requirements in them, uh, and so you're not necessarily going to have to target a specific industry if it, you want to be flexible in that, uh, and you're really not targeting a specific industry, you're targeting kind of anything but those industries that, that prefer specialists. Excellent, thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's two o'clock, so we are finished with the time that we have allotted for Q&A during the webinar, but again, please do contact Laura and, and pose your questions with Laura as in the two areas that she has indicated. Um, within the chat box, the hyperlink uh, is not activated for bridging the gap LinkedIn group or for the Twitter account. Um, it's just a, a default within the chat box, but you can simply Google each of those different um, avenues and be able to access the, um, the question posting that Laura will, will begin. Okay, is there anything that you want to add about that, Laura? No, the, the um, links on the slide, I think, should also be active. So if you're able to click on those, feel free to do so. Yeah. And uh, you can also, yeah, if you go to Bridging the Gap, they're in the footer, too. So if you have trouble finding them at all, uh, just go ahead and go to Bridging the Gap and look at the footer. Oh, excellent. That sounds yeah. great. Well, thank you very much. And uh, with that, we will say uh, good afternoon, and please join us again. We will have Laura back, actually, um, early 2017 to help us again with uh, our business analysis uh, career and, and providing great insight on what we need to be able to think about to move forward. So thank you very much, Laura, and thank you to everyone that was able to join us this afternoon. Yeah, thank you, everyone, and thank you, Deborah. Okay, bye for now.